so our program, I guess, is Chief White Cap School, and we're uh, part of Saskatoon Public School Division uh, in a partnership with White Cap Dakota First Nation. It's a K-8 to elementary school in Saskatoon Public Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, our aim and our, our goals, I guess, is uh, within the provincial curriculum of Saskatchewan Learning uh, to facilitate all elements of that with a particular focus on... Uh, our, our phonem outcomes that are in the curriculum being sort of centered around Dakota language culture mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the work that's gone into that prior is you know part of the partnership with uh, our school division and, and Whitecap to, to create this beautiful building to create these lessons mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're sort of dedicated to that in our, uh, our goals around phonem outcomes with specifics to the Dakota language and instruction. So. Well, the holistic view is, you know, just the relationship between Whitecap, Dakota, and the city of Saskatoon goes back to, I believe it's 1882. Um, I'll have to double check that on our website in our in our history. But, um, you know, John Lake and Whitecap, uh, John Lake moved here and wanted to start a temperance colony. And uh, he looked and seeked for the, the local First Nations people, and now it's Chief Whitecap. These are people settled um, down south of Sa South Saskatchewan River. And they came and met with John Lake, and now the city of Saskatoon is born, right? So we wanted to make sure that our roots here, uh, rooted as Dakota people, were also, um, I guess, emphasized and um, uh, commemorated in the city of Saskatoon. So we looked to the city of Saskatoon as it's our primary market for education, for economics, for business, you know, for partnership. So we definitely, we're 20 minutes south of Saskatoon. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, our, our, our kids had a, you know, a fighting chance when it comes to learning their language, um, learning um, their cultural identity and who they are as Dakota people. So we worked with the city of Saskatoon, SPSD, Saskatoon Public School Division, um, in collaboration. And we moved something forward, you know, that, that, that started in 1992, I believe, between George Rathwell and Darcy Bear. Uh, Chief Darcy Bear and um, Ray Morrison as well. So those uh, three gentlemen met and then they this progressed on and eventually we came to this agreement and now we're working together on a program to make sure that Dakota curriculum is taught in all these in this school and I believe it's taught in other schools as well, right? Uh, it could be, uh, Dallin, I'm not 100% sure of that, but uh, certainly we'll be moving forward with okay. these resources and the website being what it is right now. It's certainly accessible. So more or less, this seems like a pilot project right now, so that's what we're, we're doing. So we're incorporating our Dakota cultural identity or language into the into the Stonebridge School, the Chief Whitecap School. So there's a lot of history here, and also it's a lot of firsts too, as well as Chief Whitecap School is uh, the first... Um, Chief, I guess the first uh, school in Saskatoon named after a chief. Mm -hmm. So there's also reconciliation behind this as well. And that's what we talk about between the T uh, TRU, uh, Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure that we're following that as well, making sure that we're, we're having reconciliation and we're continuing on to moving, moving forward together as partners in, this, in the city of Saskatoon and with Whitecap. Yeah. And just from my perspective, just... Uh um, to get started, um, Saskatoon Public Schools is very proud of our relationship with White Cap Dakota First Nation, and like Dallin was explaining, it goes back 25 years or so. Um, one of the things uh, that I see as an aim of the program is uh, to take the, the students that are going to school in grades kindergarten to grade four at Charles Red Hawk um, Elementary School in the First Nation and to successfully transition them here to uh, Chief White Cap School. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to have those students um, successfully uh, um, take their grades five through eight and then transition into high school in a successful way and then uh, move forward from there after grade 12 into whatever they want to do with their lives. And so um, that's really important to Saskatoon Public Schools. We value our partnership a great deal with White Cap. Uh, the Dakota language and culture piece of the school is unique to Saskatoon Public, mm -hmm. something, again, we're very proud of. And we have some support folks here at the school. So we have, uh, in addition to the regular staff, we have Nancy Linklater and Lois Bear who are here that help us with ceremony every morning for the students and, and families. As well, they're in classrooms helping to uh, bring forward the, the resources, the Dakota resources and, and teachings. Mm -hmm. And we have Ian Worm, who's a shared uh, partnership uh, person that works with Saskatoon Public and Whitecap. He's uh, often at White Cap, uh, Chief Whitecap School here. And he's also in the classroom supporting students, uh, white white cap students and families. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great partnership. We're very proud of it. 
uh, Saskatoon Public Schools follow provincial curriculum, and that's set forth by the Ministry of Education, whether a student's in LaRange or Estevan. So there's, there's learning outcomes within that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some overarching principles around First Nations, Inuit, Métis outcomes in schools that... Uh, in this particular year, we, we, you know, we focus on reconciliation, we focus on Canada 150, we, uh, we talk a little bit about uh, recognizing diversity in our, in our city, in our community, in our, in our province, and uh, certainly the, the cultural pieces uh, and that respect and learning about uh, treaties, the respect and learning about cultures, uh, that's where you'd see lots of tie-ins with this particular resource and the, the help that we have at our school for uh, achieving that outcome within Dakota. So there may be other schools in our division that would would talk about other First Nations, perhaps like Cree or other or other uh, uh, you know uh, cultures within the First Nations outcomes that are there. Mm -hmm. uh, but but ours is sort of I want to say tailor made a little bit. Like again, we've we've got some things that are access right at the school. Uh, Two elders, uh, as Dean mentioned, uh, Ian is uh, sort of a transition support worker for our families and for students, and and uh, those outcomes uh, can be achieved, I think, through our teaching staff as well, but through the support of the First Nation and those partnerships that are there as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, the curricular outcomes, though, you could probably refer specifically just to, uh, and we could provide that for you through SASC Learning, and and just look right at that document as well, and you'll see just the listed kind of okay. right there in the overarching piece as well. Mm -hmm. Just intended to learn, right? Your, yeah. your culture, your identity, who you are as Dakota people, and, and also um, your language as well. So that's something we're going to be incorporating. Um, there's There hasn't been much language on the forefront, but if you walk around the school, it's basically bilingual in Dakota and, and English. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of schools, It's, it's sometimes it's French, and then I thought, oh, no, there's another school in the city, it's Cree as well. Yep. So you have a very diversified um, um, city right now, and then there's a lot of reconciliation going on, and you know, working with our Indigenous peoples as we have one of the, the second highest population, I believe, within the region. So um, the program is meant for everyone to you know learn and learn who you know, the first peoples of Canada are, right? So we're trying to educate everybody about who we are and also our own people as well. So we're, we're definitely trying to keep that tradition alive. I think I think Dallin had a good point. I still remember this from our school opening. Uh, uh, Seems like a million years ago, but it was only about five months ago. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I think we have about 45 kids from uh, White Cap that, that come out every day. And, and certainly, I hope this is a welcoming, inviting place. And Dean spoke about that transition from schools they were at last year, be it Charles Redhawk or, or uh, John Lake or Buena Vista, I think, for some of our students. And, and that learning is tailored for those students, but also for the wider audience. There's another 560 or so students that need to know uh, the truth about uh, reconciliation, about treaties, about uh, uh, the history of our, our province and our region. And so that uh, excites me a little bit, I guess, as well, to, to get the story straight and uh, to make sure that we uh, deliver that through our curriculum and, and to have those supports, again, is, is huge for, for all 608 students, I think, what we have now. So that's mm -hmm. a, it's a big, body. big, big yeah. important part of it. Yeah. So. I, think, I think one of the things, uh, again, just uh, a, a little different angle on things is we want all of our students who attend the school to feel like this is their place. And so for the Whitecaps students, this is a big brand new school, and our partners have, have put uh, money towards this um, mm -hmm. that they, they added to... Uh, the amount that we could spend on our school, and, and you can see it reflected uh, in the dirt walls, dirt being D-I-R-T-T, -T, uh, and, and uh, you know, it explains some of the, the history of the region and as it relates to the Dakota peoples. And, um, you know, I think part of the goal here is to make sure that the white cap students and families that are transitioning here feel at home mm -hmm. and feel like this is their school. And so um, I think you know, some of that is reflected in the, in the design of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, a culture room, which is unique. There's been uh, eight P3 schools, or, or four sets of two, if you will, with, between the separate system and the public system. This is the only one that has uh, a special feature like a culture room, and that's where we have our ceremony each morning uh, to smudge and to start the day in a good way. Uh, we also, um, our, our elders and our support workers work out of uh, the culture room sometimes and it's a space for families uh, that they can come in and have a spot that they feel like you know, they have some, some area that's theirs when they come into the school.
So we have, uh, I guess, what I would call traditional measures of success in school where we students get a report card uh, three times a year. Uh, one of the things that we just completed here uh, and, and haven't got the results uh, synthesized yet or put together is our Tell Them From Me survey. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to disaggregate how our students who live uh, out at Whitecap are and feeling and relationship wise, or how how what their perceptions are of the school and how uh, they're enjoying it or not enjoying it or what you know what what their perceptions are. Mm -hmm. uh, so we look forward to kind of getting into that a little bit and uh, seeing what we need to know and reflect on that. Uh, we uh, early on in the year uh, have had lots of open houses for our parents to come in. On February the 15th, I believe, is our next one out at Whitecap, just, just for our community out at Whitecap to take our staff out there and have a little, you know, meet and greet and get into small table groups and mm -hmm. sit down with parents and, and talk about how things are going. We're kind of halfway through our first year right now. I think January 29th is sort of the halfway point of the uh, uh, school year. So uh, as, we, uh, as we sort of develop those routines and relationships, one of the things that we've really focused on in our, our school, you know, along with all the curricular outcomes in every subject is again this 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 piece around culture and language but also the relationships and uh, in our first year that we've been open to, to me mm -hmm. uh, Tim that's very important that that students feel welcome here that students feel like this is their school I think Dean alluded to that a little bit before so how do we how do we make every student feel respected and honored and and, and you know part of our team and uh, Sometimes that, that involves when kids do things that might not be part of what we're about. We have to find a good way to sort of support them and make good decisions, and but also celebrate when we're doing things right and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know get kids on board with our, our what we're trying to do here. And uh, I think in that respect, we're we're probably like many schools in our division at the start of the year. There's routines developed and uh, uh, procedures in classrooms that uh, uh, are are set up for kids. We've just reviewed that. We just spent a full day here on Monday looking at that again to sort of review how are we doing, what else do we need to do to particularly work with uh, students uh, from, you know, Dallin referred to the diversity. We have uh, about 45 students from Whitecap, another 30 or so students from other First Nations mm -hmm. uh, who've declared. Uh, about 116 students from, I want to say, 42 or 43 different countries. So it's a very... Yeah. Uh, uh, diverse population for sure and uh, we spent a fair bit of time on trying to uh, make everybody feel a part of our, our crew here and, and uh, you know to make students feel like that's my school that's mm -hmm. where I belong that's where I go every day and I'm proud to uh, be here and I'm uh, enjoying my teachers and I feel like I'm learning and like th those are those things that we we try to get to so there, there's some formal things around academics I guess Tim that and I don't mean to I probably said that with a tone in my voice. I don't mean that to sound like that's a bad thing. Those are really good things. Mm -hmm. But uh, in our first year especially, I, I want to make sure that we're getting the relationship piece right and, the uh, you know, establish students feeling comfortable, feeling like this is a good place to be and they can come every day and, and feel like they have a, an ally or two here at the school on their behalf that uh, is looking out for them and has their best interests, is trying real hard to, mm -hmm. to, to get to all those outcomes, that they, you know, to get their education yeah. so that they can go on. Our leadership in Whitecap, we get a lot of uh, parents come up to us so whether they're concerned about something or else they praise the program, right? So mm -hmm. we, we, we want to hear good things. We want to hear good things about the system and, you know, and, and what the program that we've established in place and the partnership that we have in place because those are things that have been mandated. You know, the, the ideas come from our leaders, right? So when we bring them, we bring them back to our, our community, our community membership, and we ask them, you know, is this something you want to go forward with? And we get the vote, and everyone's usually for it, right? We explain yeah. the benefits, and we explain the negatives as well, but definitely the benefits outweigh the negatives. And once we hear good feedback, and, you know, this is our first year, right? So we'll be waiting after this year. We'll do a survey. We'll talk to our people. We'll have a community meeting. We'll have, um, um, I guess, an outing here, maybe a barbecue again in the fall for our students. Welcome back. But it's definitely just getting the feedback from the parents and also the youth as well. You know, how you guys feel at the school. You guys feel comfortable there. And then once we know that they're feeling comfortable, then they're in a good environment to start learning. You know, they need to be in a good environment when they're learning. You know, whether it's their language, whether it's um, different languages, French, math, English, whatever it is. You know, we definitely, and also making new friends is key as well. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be hearing back after the first year, but that's how we're going to measure it. You know, we're going to have to come back and talk to the parents and talk to our youth as well. We measure success, I guess, a lot of times by looking at 
uh, you know, um, students reaching the curricular outcomes for the particular grade that they're at. Mm -hmm. And so we want that for all of our students that are attending Saskatoon Public Schools, and we want it for all the students that are here attending Chief Whitecap School. And so we want to celebrate uh, all the things that are going uh, great. So, for example, uh, the school, being brand new, is in the process of uh, figuring out what their name and logo will be moving forward. And while we haven't made a final decision, we, we think we're, we're pretty close. And, and uh, the, the visual that's come with that is actually, uh, you know, the idea came from a whole bunch of different areas, but uh, one of the students who's here from Whitecap had some leadership in that. And so those are things that we want to celebrate. Uh, the students that sometimes needs extra supports, um, all of the students, um, uh, you know, we want, to, we want to get that right so that we can keep students at grade, moving, getting their curricular outcomes in place, and moving uh, successfully through the transitions through elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, we also want, like Dallin mentioned this, but I just want to reinforce it, we need to ask our community how we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the strengths of Harold and his team here is, is Harold's a great communicator, is the principal. And he has been out and talked to the community on a number of occasions while we were preparing to open Chief White Cap School. And once we're going here, um, you know, with the, the great things that are happening or some of the concerns that come up, we want to keep that line of communication open with the First Nation, with the community and the parents and the students. So we'll be asking those questions and we'll find out where we're doing well and the things that we need to improve on. Websites your key probably your key starting that's public, point right? is that's, public. Yeah. It's everything. You yeah. have kindergarten grade one, grade two, and that's exactly what these are. So mm -hmm. you can print them off, and um, it's obviously transparent. You can just walk in there and print whatever you want off on there. So yeah, you know, and, and uh, just a little bit of background. Like you know, this is our partners from White Cap um, uh, supporting financially the ability to go through a process to hire two consultants to work with the community, the elders, the parents, the students, uh, to create the resources and the lesson plans, <coughs> which we have by grade here. So we, we've got a couple examples, Tim, uh, mm -hmm. grade seven and a grade two binder, but there's one for every grade. And, uh, you know, to create the website and all those kind of things. So, I mean, uh, Saskatoon Public School benefits from the fact that this is uh, extra work and cost that our partners have put in place. Mm -hmm so that we can use them to be successful at Chief White Cap School and also spreading out into other schools with Saskatoon Public. So uh, just a little bit of background on the website before you get on there and have a look at it. The, the other yeah. thing, Tim, I guess too, is that the, the other piece of documentation in terms of what's taught at the school, mm -hmm. that's provincially mandated. So if, and we can send you the link, but Sask Learning is the Ministry of Education, right? So again, whether you go to school in La Ronde or Estevan or all parts in between, all all schools follow the same curriculum, and then within each school, uh, you know, teachers have a little bit of leeway on how they get to each of those outcomes. So the so mm -hmm. the great part that I I'll speak for our staff, uh, you know, at the start of the school year, where some are walking in and going, oh boy, do I have to be fluent in Dakota or whatever, and and we've had lots of supports. These being part of that, the website now being up and running, uh, the work that the First Nation has put into getting Kevin Tatchin, who's a language person from the University of Brandon, out here. Worked with our staff once. I think there's a conference coming up here that uh, is May. End of May. End last, of May. Last week of May is a, a Dakota Language Summit. It'll be our first annual. So we'll see how that goes. So, so that's an opportunity. You know, if we can get two, three staff out there to that, uh, to, to sort of bring back some of that knowledge to our staff, that's certainly uh, pieces that will uh, contribute to our our uh, specific work around, you know, Dakota language and culture. But uh, mm -hmm. In terms of documentation, like so, the website Dean's giving you some background there, but but the the Saskatchewan curriculum is also a yeah. part of what is what we all do at, at our our schools, uh, you know, across the province. I think uh, Tim, just just one thing to add, um, there is a formal document called the Alliance Agreement that is um, a legal document mm -hmm. that uh, White Cap Dakota First Nation and Saskatoon Public Schools took uh, a couple of years to develop. Uh, you know, with, with lots of uh, good input from the federal government, uh, the provincial government was certainly aware of what was happening, chief and council, of course, and Saskatoon Public School, mm -hmm. uh, our board level. And so that agreement um, is kind of a foundation for our relationship in terms of the education part of, of doing good things together. Mm -hmm. 
and it's up for renewal right now. We're, we're in the process of looking at the first four years of it because it's, it's going to come due here, August 31st, 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to look at the great things that have happened as a result of the Alliance Agreement. And again, we're going to look at the things that we can tweak and, and do better moving forward. And so there's an evaluation happening right now, but that's a, that's a foundational document mm -hmm. to everything that's happening. Well, I think Indigenous education would be, you know, like I said, uh, teaching your values, your your language, your culture, and identity as, you know, whether, whether you're a Cree or Soto, Ojibwe, Mohawk, you know, I think that's just um, the term you'd be used, right? You're teaching who you are as an Indigenous person, and then you're incorporating into, you know, the schools with um, Chief White Cap School or any other school in the city of Saskatoon. So Indigenous education is, you know, coming from your roots of who you are as an Indigenous person. Mm -hmm. So I see that, you know, just... Keeping, keeping an eye on who you are, your identity, and, you know, and then and learning it, right? And then also teaching others, you know, about who you are and your history and who you are in this country as well. So I think it's important. And a lot of the kids don't know, you know, what the first peop peoples of this country. You know, they hear a lot of the, the derogatory things, and you, you, I, I got it all, I've, got, I've gotten it growing up all my life, right? So nowadays we're, we're, we're getting away from that, and, you know, we're all working hand in hand now, and we're educating each other on who we are, and a lot of people are from other countries, so we're learning about their, their countries as well. So it's good to see everyone's learning each other's histories and background. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, one thing I'd add, so Downs, I, I think, bang on, the, the piece that I think about as well is, is uh, so we got to get the story right and we want to make sure we, we do uh, justice to the facts. Mm -hmm. And, and I, not to oversimplify it, but... To, you know, we can learn about uh, an event or something like that, but but to, to sort of uh, get inside kids' hearts a little bit too. Uh, so uh, changing attitudes, changing thinking, changing beliefs a little bit uh, is part of that education as well. And and there's a big, again, in the SAS learning document, but it's just, it's just good thinking is that critical thinking piece. Like what what do I know and how now how do I think about things based on what I've learned? Mm -hmm. What changes do you make? What what? How do you think differently? What actions do you take that are are uh, are more respectful to all cultures? And uh, so when I think of indigenous education, I mean, you know, Don spoke to the culture, who you are. I, I would put in there and valuing that as well. You know, like for all kids, and whether you are indigenous or not, like we we all belong here, and we all have a voice and a seat at the table. That's that's sort of a metaphor, I guess, but I. I do think that's part of the, uh, the piece that's important to me uh, moving forward, to bring some value to that as well. We have two of our high schools that are involved with the Following Their Voices work, um, where uh, there's a cohort of staff, uh, which is growing each year in those two high schools, uh, that look at a specific way of engaging our First Nation and Métis students um, in the classroom. And, I, I think some of the lessons that I've learned as I've, I've listened to uh, the themes that have come out of that, um, that work in those two high schools is, number one, it's all about relationship and, and creating that, that, uh, that positive relationship, I think, between not only the, the teacher and the student, but also between students and, and, like Harold said, making sure that students see themselves in the school which they're attending. And another big part that I've, I've learned through the Following Their Voices work is is the ability of using discursive teaching instructional strategies to, to bring uh, uh, response and voice from our First Nation and Métis students in the class. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of ways it's about uh, sharing that power uh, that the teacher um, you know, sometimes is seen as that person that has all the power and, and we're looking to share that power with the students so that they feel like they have ownership and, and uh, can bring their experiences to bear in the class in a good way. So um, I know those are high school examples, mm -hmm. but what I think is happening here at, White, at Chief White Cap School is that's being built into these classrooms at an earlier stage. And so these teachers are teaching with those kind of themes and ideas um, uh, starting before students get to high school. Mm -hmm. And so I see a lot of the following their voices work. They might not call it that here at Chief White Cap, but they're doing it. Having a voice, uh, I'll, I'll think back a million years ago, and I often... We hear this lots of time. Well, when I was a kid, you know, and old guys like me sometimes say, to Dean's point, teacher stood at the front and the teacher was the purveyor of knowledge. I have something, I'm going to give it to all you students. 
And I think Dean's alluded to, you know, how we uh, not just share that power, but learn from each other. And, and uh, there's a million learning opportunities in a, in a school every day. And uh, they don't all just come one way from teacher to student or, uh, you know, principal to staff. Uh, there's, uh, I guess, a spirit of, uh, A, we, we want to show up and learn from each other. And with that, trust, relationships have to be in place to make that happen because uh, if I don't feel like I'm part of this place, I'm not going to speak up and share my story or share who I am. Or, mm. uh, so we, we kind of really want to focus on that first. And, and that's, I think that's true of all of our students, not just our Indigenous students, but in particular our Indigenous students who in the past maybe have felt like they haven't had a voice. So that it's, it's important to get that part, part right. setting precedent here, you know, with our partnership and with Whitecap and uh, SPSD, you know, and also the, one of the things too is the reason why we did this is we, well, one, the reason why we did is we wanted to incorporate our language into the schools that, you know, we are, we our kids are involved with, but another thing too is the funding that our children received wasn't adequate, we are receiving close to 6500 per student, and then now I think we're upwards to 10,000 per student. So there's a major gap that we've closed with funding. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of kids, there's a lot of dropouts, and, you know, um, they don't get the same attention or the same, um, I guess, quality of education that other kids do in the province. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we diminish that, um, that education gap. And we did that by signing this agreement with SPSD. But in that agreement, you know, we want to make sure that our Dakota values, our language, identity, and culture were still upheld at the highest level. Mm -hmm. So, and we're both honoring that, right? And we're both working together to meet that, to meet that. So eventually in 10 years, you know, we want to be able to see our kids coming out of there, speaking their language, speaking their Dakota tongues and passing it on to our next generations because as First Nations people, a lot of us are losing our languages. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, I think there's over 300 linguistic languages. Um, don't quote me on that, but um, across, across the country and, and then first, that's First Nation and so we don't want to lose our language, right? So that's why we're trying to make sure that we uphold that in the city of Saskatoon and also Whitecap, Dakota. So that's why we see ourselves as taking care of our language and making sure that our values and who we are as Dakota people are always remembered and valued and passed on to the next generation. Like you said, what is education? It's, you know, passing knowledge on from one to another that knows, that knows a little more than the other. But they're always learning. The student always teaches the teacher as well. Looking forward to years specific to this program we would have uh, a, a Dakota language teacher full-time or more than one or maybe two it depends on how big our school gets to mm -hmm. uh, but that would be sort of front and center of uh, specifically a, a curriculum kind of objective I guess uh, Tim the, the part for me that I think about sort of fast forwarding is uh, and, and Dean could probably speak to this more at the division level around graduation rates so our, our, our First Nation students there is a little bit of a gap, and, and Dallin's talked about, you know, a funding gap is closed. I'd like to see that gap in graduation rates, like on-time graduation rates, close a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know, again, high school example, but when students are engaged and want to be there, that is never a bad thing, and we're going to see some, uh, you know, bang bang for our buck there a little bit on that one. If when kids are here and want to be here and feel good and have that positive relationship, trust with their teachers, with their community, with their fellow students, this is a good place to be. Like, yeah, like I want to get up and want to come to school and, and and do everything I can to to be there. And I think I think that's on us a little bit to uh, you know certainly create it here, but sustain it over time and, and grow it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I want the story to be that uh, you know for students at at Whitecap ten years from now that in grade four they're excited. Oh, next year I get to come to Chief Whitecap, or in grade three they're thinking about a couple years down the road, or you know, or whenever it starts. Because uh, it is a transition, and and uh, you know if we can make that as as smooth as possible and as uh, positive as possible for kids, and make this uh, a positive place where uh, yes we're having a high standard of learning that's going on, but we're going to make sure that we provide you everything you can to uh, facilitate that uh, you know be through positive relationships mm -hmm. and uh, supports and community and and parents and. Uh, staff working together I think that's that takes a little bit of time to really solidify and I, and I certainly hopefully over 10 years for sure we can uh, really grow that mm -hmm.
So just a couple things from my perspective. I, I want to start by echoing what Dallin said, that I, I think what we have built here in terms of the partnership and the alliance agreement and Chief White Cap School and Charles Red Hawk School and working together is unique. And, and um, it's in our context here. So um, I don't think necessarily you can just take what we've done and replicate it somewhere else and say it's somebody else's answer and they could take it and run. Mm. But we're very proud um, of what we've built to this point. By no means do we feel like we're finished or that we have it all right. And I think that's, that's the beauty of any partnership. But what I will say is that there's trust in place so that between the two organizations, um, you know, when we need to uh, celebrate uh, many of the good things that are happening, we're getting, we're getting pretty good at that. And there, there are lots of things to celebrate. Right. And when we have some bumps along the way, we know we can pick up the phone and have good, honest uh, conversations so that we can figure out a way to work our way over, around, or through those, those barriers that happen uh, for our students and our families. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to start there. The other big piece is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action, and, and I see that on display with what we're trying to accomplish here. And so over the next 10 years, there are many aspects of that document that I think we need to keep an eye on in terms of uh, both these folks have mentioned uh, Indigenous language mm -hmm. and culture. And so, you know, I think we have a start. But, but what are we going to do to grow some of those things over the next 10 years so that uh, we can continue to be at the forefront and a leader uh, for our families and students uh, at Chief Whitecap, but also you know, in a bigger way with Saskatoon Public Schools because mm -hmm. we have other Indigenous languages and, and communities and, and interests as well. So uh, it's, all, it's all part of it. And I guess I just close that little piece by saying uh, the relationship and the reciprocity are two terms which I come back to often in my work because um, sometimes I get the question from my colleagues in other school divisions about what uh, White Cap Dakota First Nation might be gaining on behalf of this alliance agreement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I listen politely and say, yeah, there are some things that I think as a big school division that we can do to, to help with the relationship and support students and families. However, um, I don't really think they understand what we as a school division gain from White Cap. That's a story that often isn't told as much. And I'll just give one example. Uh, we have uh, a learning opportunity out at Charles Red Hawk School with a hoop house that's being constructed. Mm -hmm. Uh, on land-based um, um, education uh, through the lens of growing. And so that's a connection that Chief and Council had and they have uh, brought in uh, the Hoop House itself and they're going to be teaching their K-4 to curriculum uh, according to the province of course but through the lens of this growing through the Hoop House. And it's tremendously exciting to see the students and the staff and the community involved with the potential of, of what's going to happen out there. Mm -hmm. And as a school division, we're going to learn from that and potentially, um, you know, uh, learn from it, replicate it in different parts of other schools within our system. And that's just one example. But there's reciprocity in this partnership. We're learning as much as we're, we're giving into the, into the solution here. I think we have the resources, we have the, we have the people in, in place, we have the partnership, you know, um, it's a productive, positive, progressive partnership. I think, you know, we have what we need, um, more or less, it just, um, it'd be nice to have more of our elders, you know, be involved and to continue to give their guidance and, you know, their leadership and, you know, their history on um, our past as Dakota people and, and I think, you know, just the continuance of SPSD's, um, executive and their staff to make sure that you know this partnership continues to survive and strive so I think the resources is just basically everybody continues to be a part of the game and be a part of the team so and I and, and we feel very positive that that relationship will continue so that's what I see. Harold touched on this but I, I think I'll just throw it out there um, to find that Dakota language leader somebody who's going to uh, come in and help guide uh, and work with uh, Chief and Council and the community out at White Cow, but also us here in Saskatoon Public and our school like at Chief White Cow, mm. is going to be a critical position. And so um, 
there's a process in place where we're going to be, as a partnership, looking for that individual. But I'm just saying that I think it's going to be really important for our, our progress forward with the language. I would echo uh, sort of what Dean said in terms of a, a resource or something moving forward. That would be certainly a, a, a key asset as we, as we move forward to advance that work. There's lots of good things in place already. For me, sustaining that positive relationship where when we're doing things right, we can celebrate it when we get it wrong or need to tweak something that we can we can go pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, or, uh, what do we need to know? And, and uh, for me, over the next you know year or however, the rest of this year and moving forward, however many years I'm here, I, I just want to make sure we keep you know dipping our toe in the water for our community to say what what's going well, what do we need to do, get some ideas and and some feedback. And uh, uh, you know we have a we have a a mandate of a Saskatchewan curriculum, mm. but within that, lots of flexibility in, in every school and how teachers and how schools achieve that. And Dean made reference to you know the lens of a, of a who pups and land development, how it, something works out there, so can it work here? Or what what things are unique out here? And, and we we learn that as we go, and we we talk to our partners, we uh, we listen to our elders, we we combine that with our our people from our side, I guess from Saskatoon Public, and keep that sort of synergy going where you, you can come together uh, often and, and stay on the same page. As long as, we, as long as we're here, we're going to try and do that uh, uh, you know, in a good way.